Have you seen those videos where they use a laser to remove rust from metal? In these videos, a high-powered laser is used to vaporize rust right off the metal in the most satisfying way. And not just any laser. These lasers are 2000 watts, 10 times as powerful as the laser in my other video. I want to see if this laser lives up to the hype. Sure, they claim it can cut, weld, and clean, but I'm more curious about what else can you do with it around the house. What about cutting down trees? cleaning up cobwebs, or erasing the ink for money to create counterfeit bills. First, we should read all these warning labels or something. We should probably spend some time going over the guidelines of this machine. I mean, something this powerful needs to be respected. I mean, we have to come up with a safety plan, not just for me, but for everybody in the area. We need to make sure that the machine's in proper working order. <clears throat> Master switch on, laser on, cleaning mode on, emergency stop, we don't need that kind of negativity around here. Safety glasses on, laser gun on. Oh, hold on. I think you've gotta, I think you've gotta put the safety clip on the gun. Oh, oh no. <laughs> As I played back the footage later that day, I found myself with some questions. Have I gone mad with power? Perhaps. Am I responsible enough to own a tool this powerful? The answer is clearly no, so I want to try using it as intended before I accidentally vaporize my camera sensor or burn my house down. The actual laser itself is in this big unit right here, and it travels all the way through this fiber optic line, which is the thickness of a human hair, up to the output of the laser here. You have to remember, lasers are just light, so this machine is using concentrated light to melt metal. So how much light is 2000 watts? This is 2000 watts of visible sunlight. And this laser focuses it to a point smaller than a pixel on your screen. So when I pull the trigger and turn on the laser, how come there's no beam? It's because it's invisible, idiot. Oh, I'm not talking about you. I'm talking about all of these people that are using this type of laser without any eye protection at all. I mean, this guy's trying kind of, but I think people aren't worried about it because they can't see it. Our eyes can see light from about 400 to 800 nanometers. Now this laser operates way over here at 1100 nanometers, far out of the visible range. So remember, always wear your eye protection because with this laser, you won't get a second chance. Is this laser the miracle tool of the future? Let's put it to the test. So, can it weld? You bet your sweet little eyeballs it can weld. The laser welder is easy to use and easy to learn. Like look at this piece of steel that I welded. Haters will say laser welding isn't as strong as normal welding, so I smashed this piece of steel 50 times and it still wouldn't break. You're supposed to put the safety clip on the piece of metal that you're welding. So the laser will only turn on if you touch it to the piece of metal, that way you don't laser your friends. But the whole gun is metal, so you can just touch it to the workpiece anywhere and... Oops. If you do want to laser your friend, all you have to do is put the safety clip on the laser. Shake hands with danger. Speaking of toxic smoke, laser welders seem to produce a lot more fumes than normal welding. I don't really want to breathe in a cloud of vaporized metal, so I installed a fume hood to help deal with all of these fumes. I'm not exaggerating when I say my first welds with a MIG welder were an actual cognito hazard. But with this laser welder, I was able to effortlessly weld together the mascot for our podcast, The Dumpster Fire. Me, William Osman, Alan Pan, and Niall Red host a podcast called Safety Third, where we do things like this. Have you been a good boy? Oh, hello! <laughs> um, hi! And explore abandoned mines. Have you not looked down the hole, Kevin? Look, look back no, there? Oh, I have no idea that <laughs> was back know. there. You just almost fell down a 10-story building. I'm not gonna step where there's not ground. And eat dog food burgers. Really? No, it's all dog food. <laughs> hey, want a dumpster fire of your own? Well, you're in luck because we're selling these t-shirts and some other merch on the store. Anyway, laser welder, totally worth it. But what about the laser cutter? Changing from welding to cutting is super easy. You just need to unscrew the welding tip and screw on the cutting tip. The cutting mode works, but I'm not that impressed with it overall. It can cut through up to eight millimeter steel, but only three millimeter aluminum and the cuts aren't very clean. It's better than an angle grinder, but a plasma cutter is cheaper and you don't have to worry about what's behind the piece of metal you're cutting. Overall, I would give the cutting attachment a pass. Sorry if I just kind of flew through the welding and the cutting modes, but honestly, the cleaning mode, this is where it's at. The only problem is you have to remove the whole welding attachment from the laser. If just one speck of dust gets on one of these lenses, the whole thing can go up in smoke, and then it's like a thousand bucks for a new head. 
Anyway, it's just kind of a pain in the butt. There's four different sizes of screws and it takes like five minutes to change between the attachments. So here we go. This is the cleaning attachment and the only difference between the welding and the cleaning attachment is the focal length of the lenses. So with the welding lens, you want to be up close, you know, so you can weld metal. But the cleaning lens focuses the laser to a farther distance so you can clean stuff with it easier. This is for my last video when I shot the rocket at the fridge. It was looking a little rusty, you know, after the giant explosion, so I figured I'd clean it up a bit. First, I tried the circle mode, which is definitely the best all-arounder. Next, I tried the figure eight mode, which honestly, uh, I didn't really like it. But then the line mode, this is concentrated heat, and it definitely works the best. I only had the power at about 30%, so if I want to remove the paint, I had to turn it up to 60%. This is way faster than using a wire wheel or paint remover. It's great. So that definitely worked. It removed the paint right off of that metal, but you can see that this laser heated up the metal too. Like you can see that it's got that bluish color, which means that the metal actually got really hot. It's probably like a couple hundred degrees right now. When cleaning metal, you actually don't want to go full blast. Instead, you want to stay like at 30% because if you use too much power, it'll just melt the entire surface of the metal. So on camera, it probably just looks like this is shooting out a giant cone of light that's vaporizing the metal. But what's actually going on is inside of this laser head, there's mirrors that are spinning back and forth. And it's actually just drawing the beam side to side or in a circle. It's not making a solid circle or a line. It's just drawing it really fast. This laser cleaner is pretty epic. I can totally see every household having one of these in the future. I mean, it can do anything except for sponsor a YouTube video. Luckily, PayPal Honey is a free online shopping tool that can help you save money on your favorite website. Honey is the number one shopping tool in America and for good reason, because this right here is the money button. Click this button on some of your favorite websites and Honey will automatically search for promo codes and find you deals. It can find you deals on your favorite clothes, shoes, video games, meal delivery services, and boom, look at that. Honey just saved me $10 on a new fire extinguisher. Hey, you're already shopping online. You could be saving online too with Honey. When there's a coupon, Honey finds discounts of 18% on average. So get Honey today. You can add it to your browser for free. Go to joinhoney.com slash backyard. Not just to join Honey, but joinhoney.com slash backyard. That way they know that I sent you there and that's how you support my channel. So here's where you can change between all the different shapes. The scan frequency is how fast the laser draws the shapes. And you can control the size of the shape. So what if we turn it all the way down to zero? Now we just have a long distance laser beam. Oh! So yeah, the laser will melt metal, but what will it do to objects that you're more familiar with? I spent some time playing around with it in slow motion. That battery didn't stand a chance. Now remember, I'm filming all of this at 2,000 frames per second, so the laser burned through this brick in like one hundredth of a second. It's crazy. All right, now I'm going to try to take care of some of these pesky cobwebs. So, let's see, 35% power. This worked great, and it didn't even damage the paint on the ceiling at all. Okay, it might have left some vaporized spiders on the ceiling, but besides that, it worked great. <laughs> no survivors. What about using it for stuff outside the house, like yard work or like uh, cleaning this moss off of the pavers? That works really good, but man, yeah, don't breathe that. Oof. I also tried doing a little landscaping, but it was hard to keep the laser steady. Cutting down the little branches was kind of hard, so I've modified this chainsaw to help me keep the laser steady and keep it at the perfect distance from the tree to cut it down. Just a quick little test. I started to cut down the little tree and it was cutting so fast I didn't even notice the small problem with my laser chainsaw. But after only 45 seconds, I cut right through the tree. I think I got it. No, oh, I didn't get it! Now let's try to cut down a bigger tree. Now, to cut down a whole tree, I've built this. It's a linear stage with two limit switches, so it just bounces back and forth. So it'll come up here, hit the limit switch, and go back and forth, and hopefully we'll cut down the tree. I call this the 3D printer. Watch, watch. Oh, yes! Okay, I'm kind of nervous because I'm worried about the tree falling on the laser and breaking it, but science must go on. We've got to try it. Three, two, one. I turned on the 3D printer and watched it as it worked through the six inch thick tree. And after only two minutes and 20 seconds, the tree buckled. Oh, oh it's shaking. Okay, I'm turning it off. I'm calling it. I know the tree's about to fall down because like as it was cutting the tree, it left a slice in the tree, but now the tree's like bent and closed it shut. So it's gotta be about to fall. I made sure the laser was safe and then I tipped over the tree. Ha <laughs> ha!
and then I used the laser to cut the last little bit that was hanging on and realized how much work I just made for myself. Don't worry about the tree though, I'm pretty sure it had some kind of tree cancer. I did it. Now I want to try removing the ink from a dollar bill. I had the idea to try this after I saw somebody try erasing pencil from paper. Oh crap! I had the idea to soak the dollar in water and then it worked perfectly. Now if it works on a $1 bill, am I brave enough to try a $100 bill? Don't worry, Frankie, it's gonna be okay. Don't worry, this isn't illegal. I'm, unless it is illegal, in which case, this is fake money. I mean, who would be stupid enough to ruin a $100 bill? I can't believe that worked. What's wrong with me? And then who would be stupid enough to try to fix it by drawing on it with crayon?